maybe not. I might have to go yeah. away. I, I said, I, I, but I try to record all of them and just in case you want to look at them. But the problem is when you record it, you know, unless somebody requests it, I don't really usually mess around with it because you got to send out an invitation to that too. And I don't want to make it, you know, like it's an extra chore or anything. Does somebody have a question? Oh, yeah. I have a question. Okay. When, when you're doing your planning, oh, let me see what that is. When you do a plan lesson, um, what was I doing yesterday? What's that? Yesterday I was doing the sets. Oh. Uh, okay, in the 120? Sets. Yes, in 120. And it's like, it's like if you they had like five questions, you get three of them right and miss one, it'll take you back. Okay, yeah. Let me over. let me let me explain oh, that man. to you. That is actually a good feature. Let me explain why. You if you ask um uh, each one of those little uh I can't remember if they're modules or something small or what they're called. Uh but anyway, each one has five questions. If you answer three in a row without missing, without being wrong, then you get credit for all five of them. But oh, okay. once you start missing them, this is the problem. You then going to have to do all five. And then at some point, it's you're going to get frustrated. And then it even knows and it can tell and it'll kick you out and say, work on something else. Yeah, it told here, me that. Take a break. <laughs> Yeah, and hey, here's the thing, and I want you to pay attention to this. This is why what I would suggest doing, because you cannot rely on Alex or any other system to check for you, because you can put it in there and check, and I think they give you how many attempts for the for they penalize um, you. I think it's seven. three. Uh -huh. Yeah. So here's the thing: is if you are dependent upon that thing that Alex to check your pro uh, problem to see if it's right then what happens when you get to the tests how are you going to be able so to I, check and see where it's right so i need to know how to check my own answers yeah very very good <laughs> move to the head of the class that's the key is being able to check so usually what you do is just do it again and uh do it separately because sometimes when you make a mistake and i do this too yeah. in, in and students can attest to this. If I make a mistake, I don't necessarily see it because it's my work and I'm confident about my work and I won't acknowledge a mistake just because it's my work. So, but if you do it again and the answers mm -hmm. match, then that's the sign to enter it in there. Okay. But make sure you double like, check. I kind of like I forgot the rules. Something's coming back to me, some I'm not. Like, um, what what are you talking about? Give me an example. Um, like, hold on. Take your time. I'm gonna bring up it the board here. There's a way to bring up the board here. Oops. I know I did it the other day. Basically, any equation that you do and you simplify, there's still a way to check it. I just forgot the steps. Okay, are you you you're working? Uh, clarify, you're working inside of Math One Hundred and Twenty, right? Correct. With this, right? All right. What I'm going to do in a bit, I'm going to give you a chance to answer. To a what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you one thing to work on to kind of make sure you understand it. That's important for Chapter Two. And I know that they have equations in there, but there may be one equation you're going to have to solve and it'll be later on. So, but it's still in there because it's a prerequisite. Okay. So don't get okay, too like... upset about that, but we'll hand on to it. But what I was struggling with was with, uh, writing sets of numbers using descriptive and roster forms and the membership okay. of and sets and descriptions and that, but and it seemed like it's so easily, but it was like, I was just, oh, like, it right. beat me up. All right. Let's see. What in the world did I do with the darn board? I know there's a board in here. That's what did it last time. Maybe I'm missing something here.
I can do it on my um I got a board my own little board on uh Google. But I know there's one built in here. Jamboard, that's it. What I'll do before we leave, uh, I want you to, uh, was that Felicia that had the problem with the? Yeah. The uh, Okay. Look for a problem that you were struggling with and get it ready. And then I'm going to uh, take you on a little bit of journey first. On a bigger screen. I need to get on a bigger screen. You can uh, text it to me if you want. Okay. You don't have to do everything on here. No, I was using my uh, Zoom on my phone. I said, let me get on my uh, desktop. That way I can see what you're doing. So let me try and look on this little bit of phone. So I'm going to step out. I'm going to leave, leave, you know, leave okay. down. Yeah. You have to excuse my handwriting. I'm trying to write slow. And that right there is an N, in other words, two to the nth power. Okay, what does that mean in general? Let's say we had an example. What does that mean? Anybody know what that means? Two times two. Yeah, it's called two to the second power. And yeah, it means two times two. Now on calculators, and I really wish I could project the uh, the TI calculator for you. Um, I might I'll be able to bring up the one for Alex in a bit, but I'm just going to use this one real quick because there's, it's more or less works the same on all of them. Usually you have a, a key that either says X squared. So here, if you give it the two and then hit that, then that tells you square two. And that's what that means. It means two times two, which is equal to four. All right. There, so... Um, so does that make sense about what that means? So that um, mm -hmm. the two in this case is called the base and then the number up there, whatever it is, that case is just an N, meaning it can be anything. That's the exponent. And so that tells us how many times to multiply. All right. So um, two. To the third power, and I don't want you to yell it out. I want you to work it out on paper. And uh, if you get if you get it done, I would just kind of eight. eight. Don't well, well don't eight. give me an answer yet. Don't give me an answer. Okay. Yet. I just want to have you try it, and then when you're done, just yelp. Just you don't have to say anything. Okay. Okay. All right. So anybody else getting it? 
Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, so just follow along now. I know I'm going to uh, kind of take you through it a couple of different ways. If we do the calculator, uh, well, let's do it by hand. It means two times two times two, which is equal to four. I'm sorry. Bah. How did I do that? Eight. <laughs> two times two is four. And four times two is then eight. Eight. So it's always a good idea to check something. So we'll have a different way to do it. So let's look at the calculator. So we're going to do two, and then you got this one, x to the y, and then we put in that three, and that tells us what the y is. And see, there we get eight. Hmm. Okay, okay, does that make sense? Okay, yeah. All right. Let me give you uh, something else. Now, I'll put it in, in the, the chat. Okay. So, what is that, uh, Felicia? Is that an example of one that you were uh, struggling with? Yeah. Is that what, okay? I'll hold on to that one. We don't do a whole lot of, of positive and negative numbers. But in the second half of the course, there will be some of that. So this is not something that's crucial, you know, because you just basically uh, in chapter two, you're adding, um, basically out adding and multiplying. What about you might the, do some subtraction? What about, yeah, there's, I'm, I remember, I'm kind of getting it. I'm, what about the, uh, the equal sets? And equivalent says that's where I was struggling at. Like that's when the oh, okay. Let you talk well, right. And then he was in like in word problems, so it's like. Very okay, weird. here's another one. I want you to work on it, and let me talk about um, equal and equivalent sets. What do you What do you understand now about um, to know what makes two sets equal? What is well, it that makes two, two sets equal? The element and the oh. How many does in the element in well, hold on, let me say it right. I know that um oh Jesus. All right. I know natural numbers like just one, two, three, and with the bracket. That is, yeah, go ahead. Inside the bracket, there's a Roscoe form. And then. Yeah, roster form, is, there's just, there's two different ways to, well, three different ways to list. You can either list them out or you can do a description. So on this, let's say, uh, Set A is equal to three, five, seven, and nine. All right. And let us just say B is another one. And we're going to say, just make it look slightly different, different. Nine, seven, five. Oops, five and three. 
All right. Both of those element, uh, sets, A and B, they both have four elements. But, but are they, they equal? No. Why are they not equal? Hold on. They are equal. They just. Ah, yeah. They're equal. They're in a different order. They're but, in a different order. But they're equal. Also, right. too, if we have this one. And they odd numbers. Yeah, well, they're odd, too. Mm -hmm. What about this? Is this equal to any of those up there? No. Why not? Because they have more numbers in it. And which numbers do they, uh, which ones? Which one does this one have that B does not have or A does not have? It has the have. same. Mm -hmm. They don't have so, two, three. Hey, go ahead. They have two. There's there's two threes, but right. let me put this here. Order of elements does not matter. Also, repeated elements only count once. Hold on, order. Yeah, so with this one, with B, C, mm -hmm. it's just a different order. Nice. This one's a different order, and then we got the three repeated but we only count it once because it's the same element. So that's why all three of these would be equal. Wow. So that's what we call equality. It has to have the exact same elements. That's equality. Now, would anybody want to venture a guess of how uh, equivalence is different? Equivalent is different when they can have the same amount of elements, but the elements are yeah. different. Ah, oh, that's exactly right. Order. Okay, so um, equivalent sets does not matter. Have the same number of elements. Okay. Okay. Now, just by the fact that with equality, all of these sets have the same number of elements. As I had said, is the repeated elements only count once. The order doesn't matter. But all three of these are equal, and you know what? They're also equivalent because they've all got four elements in the set, in their set. So equivalent sets have the same number of elements. Equal sets have the exact same elements. And if they have the exact same elements, then, of course, they're also going to have the same number, which means equivalent. Okay. So, so you're saying if we had five apples, five fruits, five fruits, like just five apple, different. yeah, yeah, apple, banana, peach, mm -hmm. nectarine, the same number, cherry, yeah. Then if there's five elements in a basket of fruit, and then we have five bills, just you apple. know, like mo 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 money, currency. Mm -hmm. in another set, then those two sets are equivalent because there's five yeah. in each of them. It doesn't matter what they are. It just matters that they have the same number of elements. That's what yeah. equivalence is. Gotcha. And equality means they have to be exactly the same. And if they're exactly the same, then by, you know, just the very happenstance, they're also equivalent. Okay.
Don't erase that, Jed. I'm gonna copy and write I'm not gonna erase it. Yeah. What I was gonna ask is uh anybody got these yet? You don't have to say what it is. Yep, got it. I got it. So that's three. Times three. I'm just going to use the little dot for multiplication. So there's four of them. Yeah, I got it. All right. So that's three times three is nine, and three times three is nine. So this is eighty-one, right? Yep. So let's just check it. Always a good idea to check, because I can't tell you. I mean, I've been doing math for years and years and years. Invariably, I make mistakes and I'll write them out because I'm talking at the same time. I'm not paying attention or I'm thinking about something else. And so I'll write something down and people say, hey, well, what's going on here? So that's why you do it a second time. So let's do it now. Three. So 81. And uh, let me go over to the Alex and get the... Uh, that little calculator. I want to try to start using that one. All right. And so did everybody in here get the, uh, set up on the Alex? Because uh, especially in the 120, do you, if you haven't done it, do that one first. Make sure you set up on the Alex. Like I just did there. You click on the Alex the first time. It asks you to put in your name and such. And so, uh, I have a question about Alex. So, we okay. be doing both of them? Yes, but the one that you're going to give priority is the 120, all right? Two. Hmm. I've been doing 020. Well, that's fine. It's just that the 120 is the credit bearing class, okay? So, make sure that that's your first priority, the 120. Because I, you know, I kind of find it hard to believe that most students have time to, to put the amount of work in to get both of those perfected. So make your most um, favorable attempt on the Math 120. Make sure that one stays up to date with that syllabus that we got on there on those dates. And then and work on this one as well. Primarily, I can say this, you work on the path. That's the 10%. Like I said, there's a lot of junk in it, but it won't hurt you, and it will prepare you for, for the Math 120. And then I want to have things in the class for the participation exercises. And then we'll have the um, two exam, or the one exam. All right, what was I going to do? Oh, I was going to uh, bring up uh, – The little uh, calculator. So yeah, the only way to get the calculator is to bring up an assignment. All right. So. Uh, Now, you tell me, what would this one right here be, 10 to the 6th? Like I said, you don't need to necessarily so shut out the answer. It's equal to 10. The what? So we're going to multiply six of them. Six. So let's say 10 times 10 times 10. And I'm doing it the long way. Just as I said, is it's always a good idea to do things two different ways. What is that? That's a, that's a million, isn't it? A million. All right, so let's go and see. Now let the calculator do it for us. Now on here, 
the uh, it's right here. It's the same thing. So what I'm going to do is put in the base, the big number there. Click this. It's the same thing as on that other calculator. And then it's going to prompt you to put in the exponent. And the good thing this one is like about this Alex calculator is that it may it, it kind of mimics the way that it looks on there, which is with the TI, it, it writes it in a kind of a almost harder to understand way. So there we go. Three zeros, three zeros, and a one. Oops. Mm -hmm. What did I do? I made a mistake there. Look at that. Yep. We know what that's what I'm saying. That's what I was telling you. You got to watch out because that was an honest mistake if I'm distracted. So that's the reason that we want to double check things. Math is about accuracy. And if we can't be accurate, then it's going to get very frustrating. Very frustrating. All right. Is there anybody that's kind of would like to see another one of these? What do you think you got I it? I drive school buses, so I can't just get old. So I want to see another one. All right. Uh -huh. Let me see if I can. Uh, I have a question. Um, in that? order to get to where you at right now, you have to do the initial knowledge check first. Yes. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Well, yes and no. The knowledge okay. check uh, is not going to prevent you from doing this, but this is an, an evaluation that you're not going to get yet because it's got some other stuff in it. So I'm just using it because it's got a uh, exponent problem in it. That was all. Oh, okay. Thank but you're you. going to get this eventually. We'll do this in the class. <laughs> in a few days because it's got other problems like i said these are not are in the thing they're not that big of a deal but we do want to kind of make sure that we understand distribution but i'm not going to look at that so much right now let me give you another one to do so uh I don't know if you want to, because I kind of like this song on it. What's that? We got a question out there or somebody? Get a nice blank. All right. So let me give you another one to work on. I'll tell you what. Let me do it like this. Or evaluate. All right. Y'all work on that. See if you can get it. Or just try to get it, and then I'm going to go through it. Because this is, like I said, is you're going to have um, to use the exponents in Chapter 2. You don't have to tell me the answer. I just wanted to just uh, give you a few minutes. When you're getting it, just say, yo, say something. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Right. Yep. Got it. So it's equal to five 
times 5 times 5 times 5. Okay? And then we can look at it like this. 5 times 5 is 25 times the other 5 is equal to 125. And as I said is, we can use the calculator. Where's that calculator at? I thought I had it open. There we go. So let's see. So again, this is the key you want to use right there in the middle. See X to the Y thing. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do, it wants both of them. So we got to put the first one in as the five. Then we click that and it's going to open up a little exponent hole. And then we're going to put our three in there. And then we're going to hit equal. And look at that. They match. So now you've got a match by doing it two different ways. We've got the accuracy we need to put that into our answer box. Because I was explaining earlier, if you get three in a row correct without uh, getting any wrong, you get a bonus, essentially. You, you get to skip two problems. But if you okay, so the five. a certain number in, uh, in a row. Okay, so What's you that? did the five. I see you did the five with the three. So you're doing like... So the five will be three five times five. Yeah, three fives. Five times five times five. So five times five is twenty-five. And then five. multiplying again by five gives us one twenty-five. Most of the ones you're gonna to have to do in um in chapter two. It's in section, I think it's in 2.2 .2 or 2.3. It'll be two base, and then you just change, it'll be a different exponent. Okay, I have a question about one more, if we can move mm -hmm. to the next one. Square root, the rule for square okay. root. Right, what about it? Um, uh, I need a refresher on it, like, I'm- Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Give me an example of one, what you're saying, because Oh, uh, let's say let's do let's do this. What I just saw? Oh, uh, seventy nine. The square root is seventy nine, and that's pretty simple. I probably need one harder than that, but yeah, I need to know the steps again. I need to hear you say the steps. So you said you need one harder than that. What's what's easy about this well, one? I I kind of think I'm kind of I'm trying to remember the rule. Four square root. Okay. The rule is simply like this. Oops. Put it in the seventy nine. Hit the square root. Key. Oops. I guess I did it in the wrong order. Square root key, and then you put it in the end sign, 79. That's the only step that there is, really. I mean. Okay, if I did, wasn't it. doing it with the calculator. So how do I get that answer? If I, I got no doing... idea. I don't think that most people know how to do that without a calculator. There is no way. It's a, it's a, it's not a perfect square. Now, let's say. If it was, 80, if it was oh, what, 72 or. 81. Like I said, you're getting real deep into stuff that you don't need to, but I'll do it for you. All right. So you're talking about something like okay. this. Can we? How about that? Yeah, that'll be too. Two. Okay. It's remember two. what you just yes, two. Okay. Remember you just did the one with the 79. And what if and then the question say what's the square root of 79 and then round it off? It'd be well then you round it off. You round it off to whatever you're being asked to. So let's go back. Square root 79. 
So let's say round to the ten, uh, hundreds. So that's uh, ten, uh, ones, tenths, hundreds. The, B, the eight is the hundreds. So if we want to round to the hundreds, then we're going to round to that eight. We have to make that eight representative of what follows to the right. If it's five or above, that means we bump up to. We add one to that to the eight. Yeah, that's rounded to the hundreds. Okay, so you added one to the eight because on the right side it was higher. Okay. Yeah, if it was uh, four there then you would just leave it as 8.88. Okay, leave it as 8.8, leave it as, okay. Well, like I said, you got this calculator to do the square roots for you. Um, so you I mean, this one right first? here, what? You it depends, if you got something already in there, It uh, like if you do it like this, if you get a four, and then you hit the square root, whoop, oh, no. I think if you got an answer, uh, uh, it'll do it for you. But anyway, uh, you put the square root, then you put that in there, and you do it. Please now, if you've already got if you got it selected like that, then you can hit that, and it'll put it inside. And again, this is one. The only way to do it was with a calculator. There's no way it's a it's not a a, a perfect square. Yeah, let me pick up like four perfect. is. See, like right. four is a perfect square, so it's going right. to be two, as we said. Okay. Okay, so it's but right. square roots are not going to be important until uh, the end, uh, but it's going to be more like this, where we're going to have a number on the inside, and it's not going to be perfect, and you have to round it. Yeah, it was in my knowledge check. Yeah, it's in your knowledge check to see if you know about it. That's all. Okay. The knowledge check is, is, is things that you're going to use at some point in the class, but that's not crucial right now. And like I said, is with a square root, really the only way to, to do it, unless it's a perfect square. And that's just a matter of remembering what the perfect squares are like four, nine, 16, 25, 36. And you just got to know them. Okay. There is no real steps to do in it other than knowing what those perfect squares are. But in this class, like I said, is you're free to use this calculator to figure that out because you're not going to do that many of them. Okay. See, like uh, nine's a perfect square. Six, 16's a perfect square. And like I said, is you just kind of got to know them. But like I said, it's really not that important here. You can just use the calculator to do it. Okay. We're so going to use a few of those. So you have to know right. Okay. All right. Anybody got anything else that they want to talk about? And Felicia, if you want to find something else, feel free to interject. But I want to see if anybody else has got anything because um, – I just kind of want to keep it a little bit informal today. Start next week. Like I said, I'm going to get, assign you some things to do and you can work on them during class and then we'll talk about them. Like I said, you're not going to try to make this uh, a real hike, you know, a tense class. It's to help with the class in the 120 because the 120 class, you know, it goes at a certain pace and it assumes that you understand things. And so what this course here is designed for is to make sure you can uh, understand the things that you're going to need. All right. I see those things that you got over there. Let me put that in here. Let's see. Negative 27. Caught up on the subtractions. Oh, yeah. All right. Now, sometimes, uh, you got to kind of understand what you're dealing with with here. You have a negative 27, and you're subtracting a 21. Okay. Another way to look at it is negative 27 plus 
a negative 21. You wrote one 27. Oh, thank you. So those two things mean the same thing. So if you're if, if both of your numbers they have the same sign, mm -hmm. then what that means is you add them up. So what's 87 and 21? Well, I'm uh 48. I'm going to cheat here today. 27 plus 21. So 48, good. But what's the sign of this? Positive. How is it positive? Let me put this in perspective for you. If you uh, owe $27 on one bill and then you have another bill that's $21, is that good? Is that a positive or is that a negative? That's a negative. Yeah, it's a negative. Right. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Because you've negative. got the same sign. You're adding yeah. up two negatives. Now, right. for the other one that you mentioned, let's see, you had five minus a minus four. Well, that one can be written, uh, rewritten like this. Five, and if we're subtracting a four, then we end up adding that four. I'm sorry, if we're subtracting a negative four, then we're okay. adding it, so then that would be nine. See, these are different signs, essentially. Here, you're subtracting a negative, which makes it a positive. And why does that happen? Well, think of it like this. If you've got a thermometer... Let me see if I can uh, see it, find a nice th uh, thermometer picture. All right, let me find a good one and I'll kind of show you. why you end up adding those two because we're subtracting a negative four and it works real well if I have a nice thermometer, a nice big thermometer. And a positive five. All right. So I'm going to... Uh, See if I can move this a bit to get away from there. All right. So let's say we start out, and we're not like that here in this part of the country, but let's say we were at negative 10 degrees right there. All right. And then it drops down to negative 30. So we got negative 10. Negative 10. And we're going to subtract because we want to find out what's the difference between those two numbers. How much has it dropped? So we're going to find out the difference between negative 10 and negative 30. Well, that's negative 10 plus 30. Now, these are different signs now. That's negative 10, and we're adding 30. So the difference between those two, we have to essentially subtract. Negative 10 plus 30 is 20. 20. So see right here? This right here is a 20 degree drop.
20 degree drop. So when we're dealing with negative numbers, the reason why we have to add when we're subtracting a negative is because in the on the opposite side of a number line, things work exactly the opposite as they do on the positive side. So that's why we have to end up doing that. So a negative 10 to negative 3, the difference, which is the negative sign right there, negative 10 minus down 20 minus the 30 all the way down there means we end up adding that. So the difference between those two is 20 degrees. And you can see that visually because you got 10 and then another 10. So how you know if you in, in order to keep that to know that that's a um a negative a positive twenty. What's that? Well, because what's the difference? Okay, now we got negative. another one. Let me write this one a different way there. Okay. Let me uh that's a positive twenty, not a negative, right? Yeah, let me show you. Okay. I'll follow you. Because you can look at it also like this. Okay, negative 10. Negative 10 plus, plus 30. Okay, I'm going to turn them around. 30 minus 10. See, that's the negative 10. It's just moved to a different spot now. Yeah. So 30, take away 10 is 20. 20. And it's a positive, okay. Because when they're different signs, you simply take the difference between them, subtract, and then take the sign of the big guy. In this okay. case, it's the 30. Okay. All right. Well, like I said, there's got that much of that in here. In Chapter 10, when they get to this thing called expected value, there mm -hmm. are some things where you, you, if you're going to deal with some positive and negative numbers sometimes. So so that is good to understand. It's But it's not like... Everything count. Hello? Uh, all right. So how, well, so how else... Uh, what other kind of questions people got? So let me just make sure that everybody knows what the most important thing that we talked about on uh, uh, oops I want to get rid of want to get rid of all that I guess I got to erase it before I get rid All right. So the most important thing, because you cannot do any work, and the main thing you want to be working on is the 120. Make that your priority. So you go back over to that. Make sure you're in the 120 class. You're going to do it for both of them, but you need to be working in here in Alex. And in case we've got people in here that didn't see that, um, so the 120 is the is the most important one, and get that knowledge check done as soon as possible, because that's where it's important to keep up with the pace. All right, but when you come in, you click on Alex inside of Canvas, it'll open up a screen the first time, and then you've got to put in your information like your name and email uh, address and then when you click continue then uh, it'll put you into Alex all right because this is where you're going to be and as I said as this is not a student account let me go ahead and back and go to the student account it's just in case we need some Mr. Cruz that book that book is for 120 what book? That book I just saw on the screen. Yeah, that's the 120 book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The one that's got the 
pizza or whatever is on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's it. It's in both classes, so. So make sure. So. Can I, can uh, I go this, to the ebook? Go ahead. I'm listening. Yeah, you when can go, go to the ebook. When I go to What's the ebook, when I go to the ebook, it's just hard to find out right where I'm at on the stream and how to find it on, on the ebook. So. It's just yeah, but I'm, yeah, it all everything lines up with the with the ebook. The oh, sections, with the, uh, the the sections. Okay, look at this. I need to miss the section. Got you. Right. Okay. Also, the titles I think are the sections are the same thing. Okay. So when you get in here, this is the math one hundred and twenty. Okay. Make sure you do that. It's not going to let you get past this until you take that knowledge check. It's going to measure you and see what you know. And as uh, I've tried to get across to you, it will tell you what you, uh, um, it, that way it'll tailor the program or the course to what you already know and give you credit for things if you do know them. There's some things in there, prerequisites, like the things that uh, Felicia has been asking about. And then it also asks about things that are actually in the course. So in the event that you've taken the class before, you can, uh, it'll give you a head start on those things. So make sure you do that because you can't do anything else until you do this. Can you do another you, one of the percentage for me? Turning the percentage another what? The, the turning a percentage into a decimal when it say like. Uh... But anyway, I just want to put, point out that this is something that needs to be done. So if anybody in here has not done this and then in the 120 is the primary place to do it. Should do it in the other one too, but I don't care if you skip it or what. But you're gonna have because you're gonna have assignments in there, and you got to get past it. You can't skip it. But please do this one. Like I said, it is I think you'll thank me for it, even though it looks it's a pain in the neck when you have to do it now. <laughs> do anybody want to start a study group? Because I don't need help. I'm not. I'm not good at me. So I'd rather hear uh, somebody want to start a study group. It would be good, but you can yeah. put that in the in the uh, chat. Yeah, uh, because uh, evidently, I mean, we found out that you can uh, message people through Canvas. So, share your name in the chat if you're interested in doing a study group. Y'all can get I together. I love part of the study group because Matt is not really my best subject. Well, that, it's you know what you're like most people in this country. Most people are not <laughs> good at math, so that, or they don't like it. But you know what? It's a necessary evil to get through college at the very least. You know, you're going to have to have a certain amount for any degree program. And usually this 120 fulfills the uh, degree requirement for uh, most people. Anything. Thanks. And, and then if you're going into nursing, there's another one that you can take after this. They want you to have two maths. The statistics that comes afterwards. What at the math for nursing? Oh, what's that? I said, what's the at the math for the nursing major? Statistics. Oh, my God. Okay, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> she said, oh, my God. They never they like told me about the other one. They only, so, they only told me 120. <laughs> In what program? For nursing. I know that's well, what, that's well, what I'll tell I you the first one. I mean, because you can't take them both at the same time, they're going to tell you about one at a time. Oh, <laughs> no, no, no. I they have two maths listed. Yeah, they have two maths listed because the statistics people, I mean, I'm sorry, the, the nursing people are the ones that push for statistics for nursing rather than say a trigonometry would be another one that you could take. After 130, you could go that way, but that's the way this works. You can do 120 and 130. I'm sorry, 120 and then 203 is the statistics. And there's so some if overlap. Go, if you want to go to another college, we'll, we'll, we'll make, uh, we'll make one towards the different college. Okay, that, now I don't want to discourage anybody, but you've got to check with the, when you say to another college, if it's a community college, it probably is not an issue, but if you go into a university, you have to check and see um, 
you may have to end up taking another math. Like if you're saying you go in to get a bachelor's degree in nursing after you complete at Delgado, you may have to take another one. But like I said, is it depends on the on the on the university. The colleges, if it's like a co a community Ooh. college, then it's pretty universal. The class, this class. You thinking about doing? Uh, I mean, you thinking you may have to transfer to another college to finish your degree program, or are you talking about just later on if you wanted to go back and get a bachelor's degree? Like I said, it's, it's, it's too I'm in my last class right now, and I know Matt is kind of like toys, so I wanted to do like an extra, uh, like extra toys. But All I right. know All right. So, did anybody? Let's see. I think I got everybody. Okay, man. You probably got it. I have a question, Mr. Cruz. Okay, go ahead. So we have to finish the knowledge check and then the actual assignments. Well, okay. Right. You can skip the knowledge check, okay? But here's the thing is, the knowledge check will give you credit for anything that you understand that know about that's already in the course and it will shorten your path, okay? Okay. So I just saw I highly recommend taking it, but you can't do any of the other things until you do this. Because if I go up here at that top and click on it, see, it doesn't have anything but the knowledge check. And let's me look at the textbook and send messages to people. Okay. But when you finish the knowledge check, it's going to open up. It's like a, you know, a video game. It's going to open up some new things here. One of which is the learning path and then the uh, assignments. The assignments is where uh, the tests and the test preps are going to be. The learn is the stuff that corresponds to each one of the items on the calendar. So in, I don't have it open to a, or do a, well, in the 120, 2.1, 2 <laughs> has a module, 2.2 .2 has a module, 2.3 has a module, and so forth. Yeah, I know one of the modules have 20, 20 um, things, so y'all probably won't get on it, because I know one of them has 20 um, different things. When you say 20 oh, things, oh, what are you talking about? Okay. Where you find the definitions of set set, the set concept? What's that? That was you I'm got on the, the question. Oh. I'm answering the question. Somebody's got a question about. Uh... So if we take 26, I'm sorry, 36 and divide by 80. So uh, 36 is 45% of 80. In other words, it's a little bit less than half. 36 over 80 tells us the decimal, and then the percent is going to be 45%. In other words, we multiply by 100 to get the percentage, 45. You were so fast. What's that? You were fast. You looking in the chat? Look in the chat. I wrote it okay. out. Okay. 36 is what percent of 80? So 36 over 80 is 0.45. And 0.45 times 100 gives us 45%. So you you moved a decimal. You moved. You went two spaces to the left to get that decimal there. I multiplied it by a hundred, which is the same thing as going two places to the left. Okay. Yes. Okay. Multiply it by a hundred. That's 100. what percents are. It's per parts of a hundred. So that's why you multiply it by a hundred to get okay. percents. 
All right. So let me just uh, call and see if the people that I don't have are here. I think I got everybody. Let's see. Uh, Latondra Brister. Uh, yeah, Sharna, right uh, are you in here? Yeah, that's what I said. I came in there. Is your name on here? I didn't see your name. What are you using? I'm on my got... iPhone. Oh, that's right. You told me. I mean, I, we already talked about that, didn't we? I just yeah, forgot to know. check you. So, uh, Sharna Collins. Carlin. <laughs> Elise Combs, I didn't see. Shelton. I didn't see. Simone, I didn't see. Abrian Davis, I didn't see here. Mariah, I didn't see. Uh, Jacqueline, I talked to her last night. I don't know why she's not here. Uh, Miriam out there, Miriam Khalid. And uh, Raya Livingston out there. And then the last one I got. No, nope, yeah, I got two more here. People I never did see. Caitlin Roussel. Is Caitlin out there? And Ariel White I didn't see. Everybody else I got. You have me. Can try my world. Were you on the? You're on here, aren't you? Yeah, but I need to call my name. Well, okay. I don't call everybody's name because I can see your names written out on here. You see? Okay, just checking. I'm, I'm, not try I'm trying to. I'm trying to not spend so much time doing the the uh, roster. So I just read people's name and check it. So if you're as if, but some people's got, you know, it just says iPhone or. They'll just have a first name or some other other kind of name. So I, I just wanted to check and see if those people are not in here because those are the people I have not seen. Sharna, Elise, Shelton, Simone, Abrian, Araya, Jacqueline, Miriam, Raina, Caitlin, and Ariel. Because there's a lot of people on the roster. I'm not going, you know, I'd take me 15 minutes to call everybody. So I'm only calling the people I don't see. And then one of them, actually, I guess it is. Okay, next class start at seven or seven thirty. Yeah, seven o'clock. I'll see you in a few minutes then. Okay. All right. You got so me in, right? I don't know. Did I call your name? No, no, Amy. Your name, then I got you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I didn't hear you. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you. See you All at right. seven. All right. Bye.